dear Maud, I'm off tomorrow from this crowded city street to yonder little village where the air is pure and sweet. Have your luggage ready, Maud, and I'll take 20 pounds, and we'll go to Sweet Ross River in the dear old county down. This is the start of the Village Festival at Ross Trevor, a noisy, exuberant start to an annual event. It doesn't celebrate anything in particular. It doesn't really need to. Rather, an occasion for the village to get together, to show off a little. A day to see and be seen. Something for everybody. <laughs> Not every village in this part of Ireland has a festival like this. It says something about the character of Ross Trevor. To run a festival needs local energy, organisation and pride. Friends from neighbouring areas in the mountains of Morn have come along to join in the competitions. Reputations to be made or maintained. Most of the accordion band come from the Ross Trevor area, but the opposition come from a few miles away. Master Murphy, village school teacher. He knows every child in the village better than their parents do. And he knows the parents too. Some men would find it hard to do more than lift 56 pounds, let alone throw it 20 feet. Ross Trevor, with a population of around 2,000, rests on the shores of Carlingford Loch, looking across to County Louth and the border. In spite of the many outside influences, Vikings and Normans, Welsh, Scottish and English, settlers and unsettlers, that have passed this way over the centuries, Ross Trevor remains essentially Irish in character. Today it has a different sort of settler, the commuters from nearby towns like Newry that do not enjoy such an agreeable setting. The people are proud of their village, guarding jealously their own tradition, folklore and rural identity. Proud too to be situated on the edge of the ancient Kingdom of Morn, only 40 miles from Belfast but a different world. The village has a mixed community which has been spared most of the troubles of recent years. However, the old railway hotel was fire bombed on New Year's Eve. New housing estates are spreading up the valley. The village has become popular with many people who retire here to enjoy a way of life that few places offer today. 
This is also a working community, with people who commute to their place of business, leaving Rostrever in its valley beneath the mountains of Morn. Forest Brook Mill, one of two small factories in Rostrever, originally built as a linen mill, but over a century later, markets have changed. Here, the girls of the village find employment making tea cozies, tablecloths, and men's suits. Their own men have to look further afield for work. Jobs are scarce in these parts. Male unemployment has been notoriously high in the area for many years. This explains why Ross Trevor is sometimes called a woman's town. The women are often the breadwinners, while their men have to go away to find work. Ross Trevor was founded by a woman. The history of this countryside goes back into legend. In particular, the legend of St. Brona, who in the 6th century, in this remote part, founded a religious settlement. It was in this quiet place that the blessed St. Brona carried out her mission only to have her working life curtailed by the plundering Vikings. For over a thousand years, the Klugban, or bell, of St. Brona rang out across the valley. As with much of Irish history, here legend melts into recorded fact. As the years passed and the place fell into ruin, the bell ceased to ring. Then, curiously, almost a hundred years ago, a tree fell and the bell was discovered amongst its ivy-covered branches. Today, legend becomes fact as this ancient bell rings once again during worship in the parish church. Gaelic football, a blend of soccer and rugby, is a game of its own. Every boy in the school has an ambition to play for the village team, or better still, County Down. Their teacher, Master Murphy, to everyone in the village, has a passion for Gaelic sports, and for teaching them too. With its picturesque square and gentle character, the village is often called Beautiful Rostrava. The villagers' pride in its looks is shared by Francie, who sweeps and polishes every street, a man who is happy in his work. This is the Valley Dye Works, providing a few jobs for the men of the village. A sad change from the time when it used to be a thriving linen factory supporting a whole community. These wheels made a revolution. They used to turn all over Ulster, and the fortunes of thousands of people turned with them. The web of history was shot with linen thread, tangled to begin with in the country cottages where spinners and weavers worked in the night, later gathered in the crowded mills that drew the people into the towns. Belfast, Derry, Portadown, and Lurgan. The great age of the linen trade in Ulster is over now. The blue flax flowers have vanished from the field. Today it is cotton polyester all the way from Hong Kong. And the new machines do in minutes what used to take weeks.
This will end up as stiff white uniforms or crisp green surgical cloth. Another day finishes slowly. Most things happen slowly here. Why not? The older children returned from school in Yuri. Russia in Rostrava. Work hasn't quite finished in the girls' factory, though this is a special day in Rostrava. There's something to look forward to, a different sort of music. This is the annual Flarkule of Rostreva, an evening of spontaneous music making. They're common in this area, traditional Irish music, a real thing. Because it's a fine evening, the flower will take place where it should, outdoors in the village square for everybody to enjoy, or better still, to take part in. It's an occasion to gather and appreciate the essential character of a flower, and of Ross Trevor itself, something to be enjoyed and shared amongst friends. Patsy leads the Ross Trevor dancers, prize winners. A big moment, too. Time to let the village see what they've rehearsed all winter.
It was a good evening. It went on a bit, but they usually do. The day starts slowly, very slowly. Few people feel like an early start this morning. Except those who are under orders. And Francie. He doesn't drink, and there's tidying up to be done. There's got to be school, but no lessons today. Everybody's a bit tired. And I were both big and small, and me neck will pay for all. When I die, when I die, and me neck will pay for all. When I die, I have twenty pounds in store. That's not all. That's not all. I have twenty pounds in store. That's not all. I have twenty pounds in store, and I want for twenty more. For the rich must have the poor. So must I. So must I. For the so must I. Up the ladder I did go. That's no joke, that's no joke. If you light a bonfire to burn some rubbish, you'll find that the smoke summons the army just to check it out. Up the ladder I did go. This little river that starts as a stream high in the Moon Mountains is today just a local beauty spot. But in the past, it provided the power supply essential to the existence of the textile industry, so important to the people of this area. I'm really just putting them here for a rough idea. Just for a rough idea. Oh, uh, I'm healing out.
an evening of dog racing in Rostreva. They don't have them regularly, just when people feel like setting it up. Just take her, take her down the field there, just yeah. for obviously. Yeah. 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 Take her just down about there again. Yeah. <laughs> 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 take her down, take her down about halfway. Keep the dogs away back for a minute, son. Keep up here with your dog. Yeah, don't go and have the guy say the wire, but the poor scar. I'll do. Okay. What was that dog guy? See that there, no? That old wee bit wants him to walk up there for 10 or 15 yards before that. The dogs are not quite what you'd expect to see, and perhaps they need some training. <laughs> A logical man might object to this sort of racing. He might find it difficult to see the point. But if you like dog racing and a bet, and these are the dogs you've got, why not? Anyway, it adds an unpredictable quality to the proceedings, an occasion of wet anarchy. It should really have been a six dog race. But it's not bad for a start, and the judge seems happy. It wasn't one of the better meetings. In addition to the usual worries of the handicappers, allowing for the different length of legs, and the dog's parentage, known or unknown, there was the problem of the rain. It was soaking into the long-haired dogs, weighing them down. The meeting was abandoned. The dogs were allowed to go back to their normal pursuits. <laughs> 